All right, thanks for watching. And today I would like to do a kind of tricky problem of Stokes' theorem, and which is still really, really interesting. And it illustrates the, you know, why orientation is so important. And by the way, that exam was when I took multivariable calculus, that question was on my final exam. And I still remember it was out of 20 points and I got four points for that. Just because you had four points for stating Stokes' theorem. So I had no idea how to do that question. But now, after you know, a bunch of years, I finally figured it out. And it is tricky. I'm sorry, it's not that I'm silly, but yeah, it's kind of a tricky question. So what's the question? Evaluate the double integral of the curl of f ds over s, where f is this vector field, and s is the portion of that sphere, x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals to 25, in between two planes, minus four and four. So what does that look like? It should look like a very familiar object. So you have x, y, z, y, z. Okay, so first of all, you have that sphere, x squared plus y squared equals to 25, which is a sphere of radius five. And what you're doing, you're taking that sphere and you're chopping off the top and bottom. You know, like cutting an onion or something. So z equals to four and z equals to minus four. And it looks something like that. So you're shaving off the head and you're just left with what I like to call a barrel. So it looks something like that. This is still the round part, and on top you have those two things here. And so look, it just kind of looks like a beer barrel, I would say, or like a chopped off apple. So this is S, and very important. So uh, usually the orientation is specified. If I don't specify it, I just assume it's the outward orientation. So it looks like that. Because to calculate surface integrals, you need to have some normal vector. And we just assume the normal vector points outwards, and in particular on top, it points on top, and at the bottom, it points at the bottom. All right, now, uh, how do you calculate that curl? Well. So maybe step two or something. I guess still step one. So curl of f dotted with ds. Well, there are two ways of doing it. One is very silly, which is to calculate the curl and then to sum it up over the surface. So that's, that's a very bad idea. Instead, there's one thing called Stokes theorem that says if you double integrate over s, the curl of f, s, it just becomes the line integral of f over the boundary. So c equals to the boundary of s. So maybe let me draw another picture of some other surface. So this is your surface s, and suppose sort of the boundary is a curve c. then if you double integrate the curl over that curve, or sorry, if you double integrate the curl over the surface, you actually just get the line integral over the curve, which is very neat. And it also makes sense in terms of just regular FTC. What I'm saying here is that the double integral of F prime is the single integral of F. So in some sense, except here the derivative is the curl, and f is just a regular thing. So what can you tell me here about the curve? Well, notice here we have sort of two boundary curves. On the one hand, we have c1, and on the other hand, we have c2. 
So it turns out instead of doing one surface integral, we have to do two uh, line integrals. So here it is, c1 f dotted with dr plus c2 f dotted with dr. Okay, and here comes, so far it's not too tricky. We separated out into two things. Uh, the trickiest part is determining whether C, which orientation C1 and C2 face. Because remember, to calculate a line integral, you can choose it clockwise or counterclockwise. And the question is, which one do you choose? And it turns out, once you orient S outwards, there is a precise orientation of C that you have to use. And let me illustrate it with this picture. So again, suppose here you orient S outwards, then what orientation do you choose? Think of S as a mountain. So you have a mountain and you're just walking on that base. The orientation you have to choose is that if you walk along the curve with your head in the direction of the normal vector, S has to be on your left. So S has to be on your left. And the way I remember is always you walk left. In other words, suppose this is your mountain. Okay. Which way do you have to walk so that I'm on the left of the mountain? Well, this way. I know it's awkward because the mountain moves with me, but in particular, here, you have to move counterclockwise. Because if you move this direction, then in fact, the mountain is to your right. And this doesn't make sense. OK, in particular, what do you do here? And here's like the tricky part. And it's tricky, but it's a Berkeley exam, right? You cannot suffer without a Berkeley exam. So. In this case, again, your head faces uh, uh, that direction. And in particular, in this case, you're at the top of the cliff. So think of it being like in a crater of a volcano, something like that. That's your volcano and you're walking. So you're walking on the, on the normal vector. Yeah. Then it turns out, in order for that volcano to be on your left, you have to walk clockwise. So if you walk this way, then the volcano is to your right. But in this case, you have to walk clockwise. So this is the tricky part. And even trickier, what about the other part? Well, in this case, you're like in Australia. So hello to everyone watching from Australia. Uh, in this case, your head faces downwards because the normal vector box is downwards. And in particular, what happens is the orientation gets reversed. Here you have to walk this way to see your surface to your left. But here you have to walk the other way to see your surface on your left. Okay. So what happens? Here C1 is clockwise. Whereas for the other one, C1 is counterclockwise. OK, and now that we have this orientation business out of our way, uh, we can calculate this thing. OK, and again, I like to remind you in case you forgot, this is the sphere x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals to 25. And that is z equals to minus 4. And that is z equals to 4. Okay, let's first of all deal with, I don't know if it's part three or part two, let's deal with f dotted with dr on c2. That's easier because it's counterclockwise. So notice c2, what it is, it's a circle of radius. Well, let's see if x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals to 25 and z is minus four, this basically gives you x squared plus y squared equals to 9. 
nine, warum denn, okay? C is a circle of radius three, and then you parameterize that as R of t is three cosine of t, three sine of t, and minus four, and then you think becomes integral of C2 of f dotted with dr, that's integral from zero to two pi of yz, okay, so it's, sorry, maybe the definition is just f of r of t dotted with r prime of t dt. And now all you do, you plug in f, but with your values, with the values of r. So it becomes, remember what f was. It was yz minus xz ez. So it becomes 3 sine of t times minus 4 minus 3 cosine of t times minus 4 e of minus 4. And you dot it with r prime, which becomes minus 3 sine of t, 3 cosine of t, 0 dt. R prime of t. And then that looks horrible, but the nice thing it simplifies. So it's 0 to 2 pi of 3 times minus 4 times minus 3. So sine 36 sine squared of t plus 36 cosine squared of t plus 0 dt. And that becomes 36. And you integrate 36 from 0 to 2 pi, and you get 72 pi. Wonderful. So that is, uh, sorry, uh, so my mic is jumbled up. Okay, that is the integral over the bottom, cir uh, bottom circle. Now we have to do the integral over the top circle. And what makes this hard is that the circle this time is oriented clockwise. So remember, we're on, for the upper thing, we're on top of the barrel. And this time it's oriented clockwise, so this one. Well, not a big problem. So let's now do C1, F dotted with dr. And again, in this case, C1 becomes a circle of radius still 3, but clockwise. And the question is, how do you parameterize this? Well, it's just 3 cosine something, 3 sine something, and 4. Because remember, z equals to 4 here. OK, here's the thing. If we did it counterclockwise, we would go forward with t. Because we're doing it clockwise, we have to let t go backwards, so minus t. So you just replace every t with minus t. And we get 3 cosine of t minus 3 sine of t, 4. And you just use the same definition. So C1 f dotted with dr. It's still integral from 0 to 2 pi of minus 3 sine of t times 4. So yz minus 3 cosine of t, 4. So minus xz and e to the 4, so ez. Not a very easy problem, actually, but yeah. And the derivative, so minus 3 sine of t, minus 3 cosine of t, 0 dt. So that's r prime of t. And turns out there's another nice simplification. So minus 3 times 4 times minus 3 is 36 sine squared of t plus 36 cosine squared of t plus 0 dt. And it again gives us 36. And if you integrate that, you get 72 pi. And last but not least, to get our answer, we just add them together. And that's 72 pi plus 72 pi 
And that's quite a lot of pi's. So 144 pi. Ta-da! I had a pretty hard problem. I don't understand how we could do it in you know, 10, 20 minutes, but it's okay. It's Berkeley. <laughs> and I feel better now for just getting four points on this. You, know, but you see, I survived. You know. uh, all right, so I hope you enjoyed this. It's a cute problem on orientation. And you know, if you like this and you want to see more math, please click, click like and please subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.